Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to give you a walkthrough of Filmic Pro's brand new version seven that has just been released. We're gonna go through all the tweaks and new features that they've updated it with, and I'm gonna to talk to you about if there's any groundbreaking features that are making this worth 50 pounds a year subscription service. And I'm gonna show you how to keep your original version of Filmic Pro if you don't want to go to the subscription service. Let's take a look. So in the top left here of the UI in version seven of Filmic Pro, you can see we've got some reticules. If we press on them, this brings up Quam. Now Quam is the quick action model. So this is how you can change different modes for your focus reticule and exposure reticules. So reticule is simply the original that you'd normally have. You can move these around with your finger. Now you'll notice when they're unlocked, they are orange, which normally is pretty good in most backgrounds, but obviously this one, not so much. But when you lock them, they stay red as with the old version of Filmic Pro. So that stay the same, but unlocked is actually orange instead of white. Now if you press on center weight, this is the action mode, sort of the run and gun situation that you'd film in, where you can kind of go through different exposures and focuses and you can lock the exposure if you want to, if you want to keep the focus unlocked, that's something that can work as well. Then if you go to manual, this brings up different wheels that you can use for your exposure and focus. We can now see we've got LV. LV is your levels, which moves both your ISO and your shutter speed at the same time, if you wish. You've then got ISO below that, so that's moving just your ISO. So it works in a similar way to before, but slightly different layout. You've then got your shutter speed. So this moves in stages, at least in this part of the menu. And then you've got zoom. So you move this up, obviously to zoom in and down to move and zoom out. Now, of course, you've got these red and green lines now, which you'll see in the zoom area. This is how you create a zoom pull. Now, if we go to the focus side, let's say we want to keep the focus on our Negan character here. We'll tap on the orange line that stays just the same as the white lines before. This one stays in the middle always. So tap on that yellow line. We've got the shallow depth of field. That joins up the turquoise line with the orange line. Move the focus away to Harley Quinn there. Tap the orange line and that brings the pink line to it. So now if we touch the turquoise line, that now brings us into a nice automatic focus pull. Tap the pink line and it does it in reverse. Now you can't change the speed of the focus ball currently in Filmic Pro version seven, but they have said they're working on bringing that back before Christmas. So that's a function that will be coming back to version seven. If you go to the bottom left where white balance is, this is pretty much the same as before, if not exactly the same. The symbols on the bottom left here for the presets are very similar. I think they do look a bit better, but it's essentially the same thing. You've got A, so you can make up a preset for your white balance and B as well. Now this is one thing that's a nice little touch that they've added. So you've got auto white balance, if you press that, that goes blue like before, but actually the differences between the white balance modes is much clearer. So we tap on AWB again, that's red, so white balance locked. Tap it one more time and white balance auto locked on record. So the difference between the red and the orange before was really minimal, so it's really hard to tell the difference between whether it was already locked or whether it'd be locked on record. But now, as you can see, that's much different and much easier to differentiate as well. If you look next to the white balance on the bottom left, we've got a lens picker. So my phone has two lenses, it's an iPhone 12. So we've got the wide angle here, which is 26 millimeter. So you can see they've added a bit more detail to this as well, which is nice. And you've got the wide angle lens, which is being blocked by my tripod, which is holding my microphone. If you go back to the wide, you can see on this dial here, you'll actually see that field of view changing by the degree as you go to and from different lenses. And of course, next to it in orange here, you've got the rear facing camera for selfie mode as well. Tap on the screen and that'll get rid of that menu. Now the time code medallion at the bottom is basically exactly the same as before, slightly different look, but it's exactly the same really. Your frames per second, your resolution on the left and your battery levels and your storage levels on the right. If you tap on it, this brings up your waveforms and you can come back to your time code medallion. On the right hand side, you've got these lines. This actually represents your live analytics now. So if you press on that, you've got off to keep all your live analytics off. You've got reactive as well. So if you turn on focus peaking, for example, and then you hold on focus, so you can change that. You'll see that that changes as and when. If you turn it onto reactive, that will also change as and when without having to actually select focus peaking. You then also, if we turn that off for a moment, got zebras, so you've got the Overexposure areas in red and the underexposure areas in blue that now moves so it kind of makes it a bit clearer, which I quite like. False color, so this is a really professional version of false color compared to the last version of Filmic Pro, and as you've seen, focus peaking. Play button shows you previous shots. For some reason, my last shot came up in portrait, which is very strange. But if we record now, 
you'll see that shows you what you can't use in the settings. So you've got this settings on the top left here, cog, that's blocked out. You've got the lens picker, that's blocked out because you can't change the lenses still during a take. And the play button, of course, can't be used because we're recording. Press stop, press play to see that file. As you can see, it's recorded in portrait. This is something I have no idea why it's happening. But um, yeah, hopefully the people that are paying for this are not getting their shots brought back to them in portrait. And above the play button in the top right, you've got reactive. So you can disable that or enable that, uh, that disabled. Then on the right hand side, you can see we've got the audio bar. If you tap on the bar here, that brings out the same decibel levels that you'd have in the old Filmic Pro, which is what I personally prefer rather than this basic version. I think that doesn't give you any detail really. So I prefer to have it with the numbers there. It's much more specific. Now, if you touch the microphone at the top right, that will bring you up your audio control system. So you've got automatic gain correction. You can turn that on. I would always have that turned off personally, but if you do have it on, you can turn up and down the dial here as to what you want your audio gain set to, which is quite handy. And you've got the different mics that are used at the bottom of that menu too. Now, one of my favorite differences in Filmic Pro version seven is actually in the settings menu. So if you go to the settings in the top left, you'll see we've got a much more simplified version of the menu. It's not like you've got about 15 different things to look through. Everything's much quicker in version seven to get to. So top left, we've got video. This shows you everything from aspect ratio to your resolution, your color bit, everything we had before, but next to it in the same box, you've got frame rate now, which is really helpful. So you can change all the things you need to there. Go to frame rate, select your frame rates. Much quicker, much simpler, a nice little touch for Filmic Pro. Then we've got audio here. That's exactly the same as before, although you can select notify silent audio if you want to, which I have done. Hardware, that's exactly the same as before, as far as I can tell, apart from you've now got torch different levels, which you have in Beast Cam as well. So a lot of these actual features that they've updated with are in other apps, but it's nice to get them all into one. Press device, same as before. Nothing really has changed here as far as I can tell again. You can do your presets here as well. So you can have your presets saved, or you can sync to your Filmic Pro profiles online. Stabilization is exactly the same as before. Your CMS computer management system is exactly the same as before. And Frame.io will come into action once you pay for subscription. And of course, you've got Guide as well, which kind of works, sometimes that kind of doesn't. It worked for me the other day, but as you can see, you've got two lines on the left-hand side, which is what you shouldn't be getting. That's a glitch that's happening within the app. I'm not sure why that's happening at all. If you tap the arrow in the middle, right at the top of the screen here, it's not the most obvious, but if you press it, that brings you down all the options that you're filming in and your features and your tech aspects. So you've got ISO, which you can tap on, and that gives you a whole menu for ISO. So you've got different step ups and downs for your ISO rather than going through all different levels. I personally would always have it as lowest because that's gonna give you the cleanest option. Then you can tap on shutter speed, which gives you a similar menu with more detail about your shutter angle and degrees, that kind of thing, which is really nice to see. It's a nice touch to have in Filmic Pro. Again, some of these features are in other apps, so it's not exactly groundbreaking, but it is nice to have it in Filmic Pro now. Go to color temperature, exactly the same thing, similar menu to before with your white balance, except a slightly different layout. Your minutes, that actually comes back to encoding menu. HDVC 10, back to where you can change your codec. And then your natural profile that I'm currently filming in, which you can change to linear, HLG, or log v3 if you want to go into color grading that kind of thing tanko medallion at the bottom is very much the same the details there and if you press on pro in the top left hand side of your screen this will show us a menu describing what we're looking at now and what the prices are so it says dear user if you don't have an active subscription you will be able to re-watch your videos in the app video library but you won't be able to share export or access them through your file system if you bought the filmic pro app i believe it's before august the 25th 2022 then you are subject to a loyalty discount if you want to go to the subscription model so instead of weekly at 2.99 you'd be paying 1.99 a week if for yearly you'd be paying 50.99 if you've bought it before uh, august 25th you'd be paying 41.99 a year and you can try it for free and subscribe no payment you can cancel at any time now filmic pro legacy is basically filmic pro version 6 but you'll be able to get maintenance bug fixes on the regular. So there are the ways to do this and it essentially allows you to keep the app as is without going to the subscription. So what you have to do is go into settings, go to information, and on that menu, you scroll down to download Filmic Legacy. Now, when you tap on that, it will take you obviously to the next screen where you can see what you're going to be purchasing. And that will just allow you for free to download Filmic Pro Legacy. And that is the original version that you have with bug fixes. As you can see in Filmic Pro Legacy, it does look exactly the same as Filmic Pro 6. 
menus are all the same and I think it's actually quite nice that Filmic Pro let you download Filmic Pro Legacy for free and hopefully the maintenance bug fixes do continue for as long as possible and I do think it's nice to have that option. Having gone through version 7 of Filmic Pro myself, I have to say I am impressed with it. I think it's much more slick than the old predecessor of Filmic Pro. I think there's some nice features there. But one of my main things that is a bit of an issue for me is that I kept saying this was in the old Filmic Pro, it's exactly the same. This is in another app they brought it to Filmic Pro. There's not many, if any, sort of groundbreaking features that they brought to Filmic Pro version 7 that I think make it worth £50 a year. Now, if you're making your living from smartphone filmmaking, which I definitely am not, then of course it's an expense you just pay and it's worth it. But for the majority of users, I don't think many people are going to go to the subscription service. Do let me know though down below in the description what you think of Filmic Pro version 7. Are you going to stick to the version 6 that you have? Or are you going to go to the subscription service? Or are you even going to go to a different app? If you do want to look at different apps, I suggest checking out Beastcam first. And that video of mine on it is right here. See you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.